morning. Good to have you with us on this edition of the Urban Debate. Viewers, as we unlock more and more and return to the lives we lived in pre-COVID era, sometimes we might forget, sometimes we do tend to forget that the pandemic hasn't gone anywhere, that the COVID virus exists and is still very much a part of our lives and a big challenge. Tonight, I want to talk about the additional winter challenge in our war against COVID. As the onset of winters begins, do we need to be extra careful? Is there a possibility that the cases might go up or that people become more vulnerable to coronavirus, that the virus itself becomes a bit more active? That's the big question. And we've got experts who will be joining us tonight as well. But let me first begin by telling you about this one specific report that has been issued by NCDC. And this was specifically for the national capital. For the national capital, the challenge is dual. Not only is pollution a problem every winter, now they also have to tackle COVID on top of it. The report actually warns and says that you need to prepare for a daily surge of 15,000 COVID cases. You need to arrange inpatient admissions for at least 20% of this expected surge. Winters make respiratory illnesses more severe. And patients from outside Delhi face a greater risk. There is a possibility that those in and around Delhi, now that the uh, restrictions on movement have been relaxed, more people will come to Delhi for treatment. But by the time they reach Delhi, their own state may be a little aggravated, hence there may be serious cases and all of this has to be factored in for Delhi's planning, for the healthcare infrastructure to keep those number of medical professionals ready and for the people of Delhi themselves to be extra careful. The report also says that the festival gatherings may lead to a spike in cases. It's a warning, we've seen it in other parts, it could happen in Delhi, says the report. So this is how essentially what I want to talk about. The fact that in cold season, when there is also a lot of pollution, does that aggravate the problem for respiratory diseases and thereby also will it aggravate the problem of coronavirus? What steps should we take? Without wasting any more time, let's say good evening to the panelists who are joining me right now. Anila Singh of the BJP, Raghav Chadda of the Aam Aadmi Party joins me this evening. I've also got Dr. Sushank Joshi, Dean India College, uh, Indian College of Physicians, Leelawati Hospital and a member of the COVID task force here in Maharashtra and Dr. Mahesh Chandra Mishra, former director for AIMS. Dr. Mishra, let me begin with you. Just for our viewers to understand, it doesn't feel so on a daily basis to a majority of people that COVID is still a big problem for us. But should we be on our toes because winters could add an additional challenge? Quickly, Tanvi, uh, there is no doubt what uh, National Center for Disease Control and Niti Aayog under Dr. Vinod uh, uh, Paul has uh, uh, basically issued a caution and warning to vulnerable groups who can be severely affected by on upcoming winter in the months of end of November, December and January when winter is severe. We all know and you all know that Delhi, particularly north, the whole North India, in the grip of smog in winter months, which starts, builds up from Diwali and this Parali business, which is uh, the burning of the crops and also pollution, the vehicular pollution. Since now reopening has happened uh, almost uh, in all areas. So there will be movement of people, there will be vehicular traffic. So all this pollution, the cold itself, uh, the elderly people are vulnerable. The children have 30% higher incidence of respiratory illnesses. Otherwise, when there is no COVID. So this is a caution and warning that uh, if there is a COVID also, which may also aggravate during these months, because the, those who develop this sensitivity to cold, and also other infections like other viruses, like we saw dengue was there along with COVID in Delhi and also malaria and other illnesses. So other flu-like viruses affect us during the winter months. So put together, there is going to be a, uh, what, what you should call double geoparty. That on the one hand, we have uh, COVID, 
which is ongoing and which may increase. Otherwise, also there could be increase because of more movement of people, and particularly when people, if they do not take um, preventive measures like using mask, and I would say that pe even if uh, they are using a one cloth mask, they they can use one light cloth mask inside and one mask on top of it, which by which I do actually practice myself. So uh, that may prevent them from pollution also. and that will prevent them from covid also and other flu like viruses also it will prevent so i think that is the caution uh, uh, basically cautionary note that if people do not take preventive measures then the number naturally can surge and it can surge any number nobody can fix a number that it will be 15000 it could be 20000 it could be 10000 5000 so we have seen that most of the predictions for india Uh, which were done in march and then later on like mit did in in june and july have not come true so the projections are on the one hand but real situation naturally will be on the other the groups which need to be more cautious in winter are the elderly uh, uh, citizens of our country and young children because if the schools uh, do open during uh, these uh, now after diwali right. uh but then also it will be a huge problem because these children will get some respiratory illness they can also get covid from the school gatherings and they can bring that home and the elderly their grandparents their parents can also get affected from those children which was observed in uh, usa when the okay. schools were opened uh, there were 97000 children got the infection and they had to close down the school that's why we are saying that please do not oh, and then this uh, festive season there a lot of gathering will happen in the durga uh, right. puja uh, the dashera the diwali so people have to be really very very cautious so, and Dr. go Mishra, out only when it is necessary yes yes absolutely in fact that's something that we've said repeatedly every time there's been you know a festival around in the last 6 months that uh, caution has been sounded out Uh, but at the end of the day it's up to people how much they want to follow these rules and how much they think they want to take the risk but if i can just take the point forward of specifically of the winter season and that challenge dr shashank joshi to you also what's the uh, big concern is it the fact that the pollution will aggravate our respiratory problems or is it the cold temperature that can aggravate the respiratory problems what is it that makes it uh, a, a bigger challenge Tanvi, the biggest challenge we have is that as we are unlocking, people are behaving irresponsibly, and that is the biggest challenge we have. As I agree with all the points Dr. Mishra has made very appropriately, as the temperatures come down, particularly north of India, the challenge is all respiratory illnesses go up, pollution goes up, and we know that respiratory viruses, including flu viruses, go up. Currently, there is no correlation between COVID and temperature across the world, but probably this is the first winter. covid will see in india because we but the point is that india is a tropical country and our peak happened during monsoon while in north of india i particularly feel there will be a challenge for corona also over and above what will happen the other challenge is pollution though due to decongestion and the lockdown the overall pollution has come down i wish and pray that this will stay and if we are less polluted probably overall respiratory infections will be lesser but clearly there is a challenge of crowding clustering and we now know that covid is a airborne droplet infection so if we do not behave appropriately we have a challenge and as dr mishra rightly said the best vaccine we have is actually the mask if we have a appropriately fitting mask it is more effective than the vaccines which are undergoing trials see no vaccine will have a efficacy beyond 65 to 70% but if you have a well fitted mask with your sanitization as well as distancing then your likelihood of getting covid is less than 90 95% the mask has the other advantage of saving you from the particulate matter and also reducing the pollution also reducing the other respiratory infections which are airborne and droplet borne so clearly it has its own advantages responsible behavior is the key and i think if the citizens at large are behaving responsibly we can go a long way and north india is more vulnerable and the vulnerable groups like senior citizens diabetic hypertensives people who have chronic illnesses i think they should stay home and i am completely against school and college opening because they will be the spreaders and super spreaders i think in the winter season mm. particularly in the north 
the schools should be virtual and i don't think physical schools are the are of the order right now particularly when we are just about getting better on the covid numbers now and we are seeing a flattening happening Correct. i think it is not appropriate sometimes to do that okay and i and i don't think that at least the delhi government is even considering that uh, any time soon uh, but we will come to schools and 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 children specifically in just a bit but raghav let's talk about the larger picture uh, the dual challenge that uh, not just delhi many other parts of north india will now be staring at but for delhi it is because you also have a lot of outsiders who come to the national capital for treatment so you have those people coming in you have pollution uh, which will go up you also have the cold temperature what's the policy uh, that is being worked on to tackle all these challenges look first of all the only thing that is predictable about the covid-19 sars virus is its virus's unpredictability that's the only thing that is predictable we still don't know mankind still doesn't know how this virus behaves how it operates whether it stays in the dust particles whether it is airborne whether it's not airborne how does it respond to temperature so on and so forth and a lot of studies done by various reputed uh, institutions have made various figures and estimates as to the spread of this disease and many of them have actually fallen flat however this recent report that has been put out by some learned doctors as well as uh, you know very renowned institution we do take cognizance of this and we will certainly factor this in when we devise a policy uh, for the winter months however yes uh, as somebody who's a lay person as somebody who comes from a non science background uh, i do feel and it it appeals to my mind that covid-19 coupled with air pollution with festivities with the winter months of course uh, can be a lethal combination uh, for one's respiratory health and that is an issue now speaking of air pollution and air pollution alone there was a report published last year by TERI that is TERI which said that 70% of the major contributors towards delhi's air pollution come from outside delhi only 30% have their origin in delhi and out of this 70% the substantial bulk tanvi is stubble burning and last year the union government the central government the bjp led government's uh, cpcb which is the agency that monitors uh, the air pollution levels etc said that 45% uh, of delhi's air pollution was because of stubble burning and the stubble burning season has just started and in fact if i were to give you some very pertinent facts mm. and this is something also that we should uh, discuss and debate uh, which is that in the first week of october in the first week of october 2020 we have seen the number of stubble burning cases increase by nine times in punjab and three times in haryana in comparison to the first week of october of 2019 that is in comparison to last year there is a whopping increase of 900% in stubble burning cases in punjab and 300% in uh, haryana and both of them are run one is by congress and the other is by bjp so therefore i am not leveling charges against one political party i am only saying that if yeah, neighboring so states are are apathetic are uh, do not care about the you know respiratory health of the people of delhi then we are facing a very serious challenge and therefore through your channel i appeal to epca which is a supreme court monitored and constituted body i appeal to cpcb i appeal to the union environment minister to take cognizance of this if we do give alternative to farmers incentivize them uh, for not adopting burning of stubble and other innovative ways so, like the honorable chief um, minister of delhi has done yeah but i i don't want to I don't want to focus too much on that frankly that's just going to be a political war of words maybe we can keep it for another day and it will go on forever with absolutely no uh, you know uh, solution popping up if we've seen it in the yeah, last uh, several thing. years and we forget about this issue for the entire year and, and then we start talking about it again uh, uh, all I would expect from political parties is to talk about what they have done to bring down pollution in the entire year and and, and how they're preparing right now and and tonight i want to focus more on yes, the yes i will respond to that for you i no so with the no, winter no, no. First, season first. and the pollution and the you know a, a well, people coming from outside at the end of right. the day 
it will have to be the national capital which will need more hands i'll come to that i'll come to that just give me half a minute now i think it's wrong to paint all states and all political uh, parties and administrations with the same brush as far as delhi is concerned our honorable chief minister shri arvind kejriwal has been working round the clock 12 months in a year only to find solutions to air pollution and he has very recently come out with a seven point plan his yudh against vayu pradushan where he has very carefully calibrated a methodology a strategy to deal with air pollution and you know even uh, 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 you know being a cosmopolitan uh, state uh, we have some farming areas in the outer parts of delhi where stubble burning happens and we have given a solution to stubble burning we have come out with this bio decomposer uh, you know which was invented by pusa institute which actually falls in my constituency uh, and uh, this solution once sprayed on the farm field gives a very good alternative to farmers which actually incentivizes their uh, uh, next produce and therefore I, all i'm trying to say is if there is will if there is a political will and administrative backing you can come out with solutions now delhi is a landlocked city uh, delhi yes gets a lot of influx of people a lot of travelers come in a lot of people during these festivities visit delhi to meet their relatives to spend time with their relatives of course and one is certainly cognizant of that at this point in time we are only uh, you know implementing the guidelines that are issued by the mha uh, under the uh, disaster management act Uh, we have very le- minor leg room to uh, tinker with the guidelines that are issued and therefore uh, god forbid if situation worsens if this report actually comes true which to my mind i don't know whether you know there is any uh, you know uh, empirical evidence to suggest that we will be seeing 50000 cases a day but if uh, this does come true of course very serious steps what will be taken both by the delhi government and by the union government and the uh, you know various provisions of the uh, disaster management act will kick in however at this point in time as far as your larger question regarding the covid situation is concerned tanvi things are pretty much under control the beds are vacant icu beds are vacant best possible yeah. healthcare is available mortality rate in delhi ha- is the lowest in the country and the, the 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 recovery rate which is a very important thing that i am about to say the recovery rate is far greater than the infection rate and that is what sums the you know the success of the arvind yeah. kejriwal model of fighting covid-19 okay uh, let me bring in anila singh as well because at the end of the day anila singh it will have to be the center and the state and the neighboring states the bjp and the aam aadmi party who will have to work together now there can be multiple factors at play that could lead to a rise in cases in a surge of all 15000 per day it may be less it may be more we don't know but we have to prepare ourselves that's that's the job of policy makers uh, that they need to anticipate situations and prepare accordingly what's the plan that the center has for the national capital uh tanu you were absolutely correct i think this is one subject uh, we should not politicize about like i have always said that i hate to politicize women and uh, secondly if i talk about uh, pollution because you know it harms everybody whether a person is from bharatiya janata party or aam aadmi party or congress or uh, elsewhere the thing is i totally appreciate the efforts which has been taken by arvind kejriwal ji for uh, delhi state and he like i heard him and he said that he is in talk with different chief minister neighboring uh, chief ministers as well that is a pretty good move because you know all the chief ministers whether we talk about uttar pradesh haryana or uh, um, punjab i think everybody worries about it and as the winter approaches we very well know that we uh, just now uh, we heard the enlightenment talk uh, of uh, two doctors on a panel and they told that how the winters you know they can play havoc on the health of uh, children of elderly and even the youngsters so uh, the steps which has been taken by the union government like we had been working on it throughout and uh, the good thing is again like uh, in uh, delhi if i say so two smog towers will be installed one by delhi government and one by union government like many things are there i mean uh, they have categorized uh, the air quality um, uh, parameters like if it is poor uh, if it is poor or it is bad or very severe accordingly like they have to take the steps and i think whether we talk about the union government or whether we talk about the state governments and when i say state governments i include all the neighboring states as well they are taking steps but if i like i come from uttar pradesh one we and i know that uttar pradesh is a country in itself 
definitely all the messages are given, all the steps are being uh, taken, but it takes time because size of uh, Delhi state is very, very small. Very small. I mean, we can't compare it with other states. So it will be bad on our part uh, if we say, Delhi mein to ye ho raha hai, baaki jage to ye nahi ho raha, kyun nahi ho raha hai. I think it, this is one thing we have to work together. And uh, as I said in the beginning, I totally appreciate the efforts which has been taken by Delhi Chief Minister. And uh, just now Mr. Raghav uh, Chadda also mentioned that how Delhi is very well prepared uh, for more COVID uh, patients. I'm pretty sure whatever he's saying, he must be uh, right about it. Okay. But I can say so, uh, uh, I can say so about uh, Haryana and okay. Uttar Pradesh as well. No, so I, I, you know, I would ideally want specifics, specifics on how the central government hospitals or the MCD run hospitals are going to prepare for any uh, surge in cases which happens or how the ARM, ARP, uh, ARP government is going to prepare for it. I would want specifics on how we're going to take individual steps in Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi to curb the pollution and also to, to, uh, to ensure that people follow the norms. I think uh, uh, implementation of norms will become very important. Uh, Dr. Mishra, if I refer to the report again, the NCDC report has a very detailed section or a warning about the festival season. And it goes on to say large gatherings must be avoided. Festivals pose a huge challenge in the pandemic control. And they have, in fact, gone ahead and said that Onam in Kerala escalated the pandemic seriously. Uh, Ganesh Atuti in Maharashtra escalated the pandemic seriously. Festivities could reverse the emerging gains that we've seen of all the work that's been done so far to reduce cases, to contain the infection. Uh, and that will be a big setback. So, Dr. Mishra, should this be something that we leave it to the people? Or do we need to start looking at tougher norms to uh, an implementation of social distancing, wearing a mask? How do we tackle the challenge that comes along with festivals? It is uh, easier said than done uh, for general public. We have seen that. I, I see uh, people packed up in a truck traveling from uh, Gurgaon to Jaipur and elsewhere also. People in markets... They put on mask, the mask comes down below nose, it comes down below mouth also. So uh, now everywhere it's very difficult. I have uh, stopped people and told them, please put on your mask properly. So this is something uh, very much uh, desirable by the public behavior that uh, they can do puja at home rather than going and risking their uh, getting in infection from the gatherings in the pandals and all that because it will be extremely tough for anybody to maintain social distancing. We all know, we, we have been going to these pandals, puja pandals and all that, but it's very difficult to maintain distance there because at the time of Aarti, there will be a lot of people gathered. So the advisory has already been issued, but how much that advisory is enforced and also implemented by people themselves because ultimately people should take their own health in their own hands. Everything governments can't do, whether it's Delhi government, central government, Punjab government or UP government. So people have to be behaving responsibly. Then only we can win over this crisis and we have just looking that we are uh, coming little bit closer to flattening the curve and if people do not take precautions and do not behave properly, we can all lose this. And that is what is the caution. That's what I said. The NCDC report under Dr. Professor Vinod Paul is a caution to public as well as caution to the government that we have to be prepared to for the surge of patients, which could be any number. Nobody can predict that number. As Raghav very clearly said that th there is one thing which is for sure about this illness, that's unpredictable behavior. Asymptomatic on the one hand, severe symptoms on the other hand, people dying. So uh, it's very difficult. So the only way people can save themselves by not getting the infection, by at least putting on mask properly, even one, even two masks can be put on and then go to these gatherings because it's very okay. easy to get this infection. That is the problem with this virus. It's so infectious that you stay 10 minutes, 15 minutes with someone who has infection and you get it. 
Okay, so uh, one question that uh, a lot of people are asking right now, uh, Dr. Shashank Joshi, is wearing masks, uh, we, we wore different kind of masks for pollution, uh, and especially in North India now, it's pretty much become an annual affair. Every time you step out in, in November and December, you have to wear these masks. For, for, for COVID, we were told just regular cloths would do. What do we do now? What kind of masks do people go ahead with now, this winter season? So, Tanvi, there are two, three things which we need to understand. If you are working in a COVID environment or COVID-related environment or a high-risk environment or high-risk zone, then it is N95 or a three-ply surgical mask. But otherwise, when you are doing travel, which is not likely to be crowded, as Dr. Mishra said, we can use two cloth masks and do them one over each other. So that is also okay. We have to look at access, availability, affordability. Now, most of the N95 masks are also affordable now. But that is more for a healthcare setting or a very clustered, crowded environment for high-risk groups like police personnel and others. But otherwise, you can use regular cloth masks, which are well-fitting. And see, the most important thing can be in a mask, as, do as Dr. Mishra said, is it should not come below your chin and below your nose. And if you are able to do that, and if you are not able to cover it appropriately, then we are losing the whole battle. So a well-fitting mask, and the mask should not get moist. And it should not be able to blow a candle. There is a simple candle blow test. So if you are able to do that, that's good enough for you to last you for the day. And you can always, you know, that most of these disposable masks also, you can keep them well cleaned and then you, they can be used after a week also. So there are very good, you know, uh, even including the government of India has done a very good website of how to use the mask, how to reuse the mask, how to fit them. But the most important thing is responsible citizens wearing the mask and wearing the mask when they are in close contact. See, the most important thing is you may wear the mask most of the time, but when you are in a marketplace, when you are in a shop, when you are hmm. in a closed environment, when you are with human interaction where social distancing is not there, that's the time where the transmission risk is highest, and that's the time you need to wear it. The other vulnerable time is when you are visiting a public toilet or when you are, when you are visiting an eatery. When you, are, when you are unmasking, that is another vulnerable time. So we need to ensure that these spots like eateries, restaurants, you need to be extraordinarily cautious in masking and unmasking and appropriately handling them. So I think it is very doable. I don't think there is much difference between pollution and COVID and viral transmission of other respiratory diseases which are droplet induced. So as long as they are appropriately fitting and whatever is available and affordable, that is the way to okay. go. If of course there are healthcare environment, then of course the, the type of mask one needs are totally different. Okay. Let's come to the other aspect then, which was raised by our experts earlier, Raghav, and which is about uh, uh, children and uh, limiting the exposure in winter season, uh, you know, the uh, outside air, uh, the polluted air, as well as the COVID possibility for our children. Uh, is there already a plan or a, a conversation in place about what to do for schools and whether at all we should allow schools to reopen? Well, of course, as you see from time to time, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi, Shri Manish Sisodia, who also looks after the uh, education portfolio, has been addressing the parents, the children, the media, and all stakeholders who are involved in this ed education sector and, uh, you know, we have been uh, deferring the uh, opening of schools simply because, you know, the outbreak, uh, though it seems to be under control in Delhi, we don't wish that our children and our teaching staff get exposed to COVID-19 and these places act as super spreaders. What one has learned from, uh, you know, various countries across the globe where schools and such educational institutions had opened that you know, it led to um, a, a rapid increase in the spread of the disease. So therefore, one has to be cognizant. And at the same time, one also needs to pay attention to the uh, digital divide that exists in our society where uh, you know, uh, uh, few, few students do possess uh, iPads and computers to undergo their studies, while several others who are poor, who come from marginalized sections of society, who are, the, are destitutes, may not have access to such fancy gadgets. So the digital divide also needs to be bridged. So the government of Delhi is working on both these things and mm. trying to strike a balance. As of now, uh, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister has said that schools shall remain shut in the event that the situation uh, does uh, you know, uh, improve. 
which I hope it will very soon, uh, you know, a fresh look on the reopening of school will be taken. Okay, um, let me in fact uh, just bring in Dr. Mishra before I go to Anila Singh. Dr. Mishra, uh, is this a, a uh, you know, uh, something that specifically needs to look into uh, the fact that children should not be stepping out at all? Uh, they've already been in a lockdown for now uh, over six months to then now say that the winter challenge will become more tricky, so you should stay indoors. Uh, what should parents be do, uh, thinking and doing right now? I think what uh, has been, I, 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 I'm reading somewhere that some, they are saying that per classroom these many students will be there. But during the breaks uh, and during when they are eating something, it will be very difficult for children to not eat together uh, in the, during the break uh, time and all that. So the, the risk which the children will carry uh, from the school when the, so, uh, the physical distancing is not real, it's always on paper it looks good. Uh, in theory we can say anything, but whether people are following it, it's a different situation altogether. And that is what is the challenge. And uh, what I feel, uh, there are certain decisions that have already been taken by, I think, Delhi also and elsewhere also that there will be promotion to the next class because it's a heavens are not going to fall if they do not complete at least who do not have the board exams coming up uh, 10th and 12th those if they are the only ones allowed with the distancing uh, increasing the number of classrooms maintaining physical distance and telling them about do's and don'ts very very strictly uh, otherwise it will they will carry huge risk of taking infection home and infecting their grandparents and parents. That's the huge risk we will carry whenever schools are open until the pandemic is over. So that is something is a very challenging thing for everyone. It's not easy decision for governments also. And parents, although there is no pressure from the parents right now uh, for opening the school, and as Raghav said, there is a digital divide also. But what I am saying, losing even a year, uh, I don't think it happens will fall down because uh, the other thing which I want to say about mask generally people when they talk to someone they bring down the mask that is when the mask has to be covered covering the face and th our doctors do it daily and I have to tell them please put on mask and you can speak with mask there is no uh, uh, bar on that speaking within the mask. So I think this is one common habit which people have that as soon as they speak, talk to someone, they bring down the mask, which is not really, should not be done because that is when you are actually throwing droplets and the virus out and somebody can then inhale and get the virus. And, and Dr. Joshi, uh, just to, you know, again, reiterate this a little more. Um, Will the droplets stay in the air longer or travel a little bit more when the air itself is polluted or more polluted? Absolutely. I think there is no question asked that we are creating an environment which will be more conducive for the spread of the COVID virus during the polluted times and it, it, will, make, it will be more conducive. Even moisture, you see what happened in a tropical country like India during the monsoons, we saw a peaking. And that was mainly because of the humidity and the moisture, particularly around the tropics. So you saw Mumbai, Maharashtra and various other parts of the country, they had a higher peak during the moisture time. Similarly, when the winter will set in with more uh, particulate matter which will go up, clearly there will be a much more vulnerable environment and a conducive environment for viral transmission. So viral transmission risks, which is why Dr. Paul's committee has rightfully flagged a little bit of a red signal and an alert that we need to be extraordinarily cautious as we enter because there's a dual Joe party. There is pollution winter coming up at one end and then there are festivities which is likely to have poorly ventilated spaces and overcrowded environments. So we have to be extraordinarily careful because we are making this transmission risk a little more than normal times. And therefore that is something which we need to recognize better. It is a smog which will really cause all the problems because the particulate metal will settle down and the virus will stay stable in that environment. 
and that is the real worry which we have so raghav uh, we come back to this point again now uh, uh, the the worry of pollution adding to our covid woes uh, like you said we've already seen stubble burning begin the one uh, a positive side of the lockdown was that the pollution came down uh, our emissions came down whether it was from our automobiles or our factories and uh, you know uh, uh, everywhere else but there are things that even the delhi government hasn't been able to deliver on now what do we say about that while you can point fingers at punjab and haryana your public infrastructure transport infrastructure hasn't been upgraded your mechanical sweeping on roads is still a distant reality open dumping of uh, you know municipal solid waste is still happening in delhi uh, the target of completing uh, greening and pavement of roads has not been achieved so there are a few things that have to be set in order within delhi which perhaps are not dependent on punjab or haryana to follow up all the things that you have just enumerated only a few have a direct correlation with the problem of air pollution and i uh, am very happy to bring this to your notice that as far as augmentation of a public transport system is concerned thousands and thousands of new buses as we speak have started flying on the streets of delhi in comparison to last winter uh, mechanical sweeping of streets is being done in several parts of the city it may not have it may not be uh, you know being 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 done in every nook and corner it is certainly being done in large part of pwd owned roads however a lot more needs to be done i am not shying away from the fact that a lot more needs to be done in order to deal with this issue of air pollution but the larger point that i'm trying to make here is that delhi is a landlocked city we are surrounded by four five states now if the states that we are surrounded by do uh, you know create sources of air pollution do have high amounts of air pollution and with the flow of the wind those uh, you know uh, pm 2.5 and pm 1.0 particles come to delhi they do uh, you know impact the respiratory health of the people of delhi and therefore i think a holistic solution a pan north india solution needs to be evolved uh, you know yeah, this is a battle which no state government or no administration or no political party alone can fight and therefore you know we we'll, we 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 look forward to the leadership of the union mm. government to have all these states sit together rajasthan is being run by congress punjab is being run by congress haryana and uttar pradesh are being run by the bjp delhi is run by arvind kejriwal aam aadmi party yeah. all state government should come and work together we have demonstrated our will you know tanvi if you were to speak to any expert uh, you know even if they have any political biases they will certainly say one yeah. thing to you which is that if there is one chief minister in the country that has demonstrated uh, the will to deal with air pollution has taken some concrete steps to fight air pollution that person happens to be shri arvind kejriwal and we hope that we get similar uh, sort of you know help and assistance from our neighboring states now i do understand that there is a dual challenge that uh, that delhi is going to face in the winter months one is air pollution which in, in impacts uh, the respiratory health of people and the other is the lethal covid 19 virus that also impacts the respiratory health of people i don't know that these two things can make matters worse or not at this point in time i have no empirical evidence to suggest but as these two certainly remain two separate stand alone uh, battles that will be fought by the people of delhi and the government of delhi together if we do get some assistance from neighboring states it will make this fight uh, for us very easy Um, having said that, a number of steps have been taken by yeah, the Arvind Kejriwal government. Yeah, but Raghav, let me just say that. A seven point. Ah, uh, but you have to prepare for that already, right? No, none of us know. We can only have the experts guide us and, and tell us what has been the pattern elsewhere, or, or with similar viruses. But we have to any which is anticipate and plan. The fact that uh, there are higher number of admissions for respiratory illnesses every winter is is any which is known. the fact that now that restrictions have been lifted on movement you will see if a lot more people coming to the national capital for treatment that's also known the fact that Look, uh, uh, while you've managed to control covid right now and and you say the second peak uh, is, is, you know you're over it now and the numbers are beginning to show a, a, a drop uh, we can't let our guard down as we unlock more and if we put all of this together and, and the pollution trigger to covid then we have to anticipate some kind of spike and work on a plan for that if need be you need to then reach out to the central government uh, and say let's let's figure this out 
No, of course, you see, lockdown was never a permanent solution. Lockdown was imposed only to give some time to states to ramp up their public health machinery. Now that is done, of course, unlock will happen and unlocking will, uh, you know, progress as we uh, move forward. And with, uh, you know, uh, with, with this process of unlocking, yes, we may see a slight increase in the number of COVID cases. Uh, coupled with that, there is a lockdown fatigue and a sense of weariness that has set in in people. And I'm not shying away from acknowledging that issue that a lockdown fatigue has set in, which has resulted uh, in a lot of people not being very careful with their masks or uh, you know, the hygiene, hand sanitization, social distancing, so on and so forth. So I think all these uh, need to be sort of weighed in and, you know, looked into when a, when a holistic plan is prepared and the government of Delhi is doing its utmost best. At this point in time, I'm very happy to report that COVID-19 is very much under control. Our infection rate is low. Mortality rate in the country is the lowest. The per million testing of COVID-19 is the highest in the country. And the gap between the recovery rate, a positive gap, a, a favorable gap between the recovery rate and the infection rate also goes in our favor. So therefore, I think all these things uh, kept in mind, uh, we are prepared for, a, for, you know, for the winter months. Um, but yes, I mean, when you're already fighting a pandemic, if a vector borne disease like dengue or malaria kicks in or you know, respiratory issues start happening due to increased levels of air pollution, that certainly make the fight more difficult. And, and I, we as a government certainly acknowledge that. Okay, I'm completely out of time. I'm going to thank all of my panelists for joining us right now. But viewers, the idea here was to tell you, to make you aware, the government needs to prepare, the government has been warned, the government needs to now talk to, uh, you know, various stakeholders and put in a policy. We have built additional healthcare infrastructure. But the pollution is a reality and it is bound to get worse from here on, even if it's not as bad as last year or the year before that. We don't know that. COVID is a reality. The two together are a lethal combination. That's what the experts are telling us right now. This should be enough for you to remember to not let your guard down this winter season. To remember to be extra careful this festival season. To remember to take care of the elderly and your children and to wear a mask when you step out as the cases go up if they go up again in the coming months and the struggle for beds begins you are the one who will have to go through that experience so it's better if we take the precautions as we on our part continue to ask the governments what preparations they are doing to deal with this dual challenge of pollution, cold weather and coronavirus. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation.